still do that like with my barber because I, I have two people that come out here the lady and the barber the barber always talks about football and since he's i'm from colorado so like oh the broncos this the broncos that do you remember this do you remember that i'm like yeah, yeah the broncos yeah. suck yeah and then i'm like uh fucking um how, what's his name i don't even that legendary quarterback that john that, elway john elway yeah peyton manning i mean you guys had uh troy ake man and and then who else roger starbuck Tony Romo. Yeah, yeah. The top three. So that's kind of sad. But, you know, um, Broncos, on the other hand, John Elway had a fucking arm for days. You know, I'm there I am talking out of my ass, you know. So I guess what you should take away from this is like, I could probably talk about anything and pretend like I'm interested or I'm good at it or that I know about it. But I'm most likely bullshitting. That's how I get out of a lot of... Uh, Hiccups. <laughs> and that's good because, you know, like, sometimes you just got to bullshit your way out of a predicament. Like, I'll give you an example. My, bo my buddy always said, if I get pulled over, I don't speak. I only speak in sign language. And you are mentally ill. I'm yeah. telling you, that buddy, he could bullshit his way out of a ticket. Well, there you guys have it. If you get pulled over, act like you have Down syndrome. And we have Maddie Eyes in the house. You already know. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you, bro. So, we have plenty to talk about. I understand that one of them is double standards. Correct. What's good about double standards? I don't think there's anything good because... You don't think and so? You no. don't think there's a silver lining at the end of the tunnel? Not that I could personally think of, because double standards is not everybody is equal in some way, shape, or form. If you really stop and think about it. But not everyone is equal. Why are we pretending that we're equal? Well, you're right. There is a hierarchy in things. Just look at the United States. There's the president. And then... You go with the Senate, the state, and the people. They, <clears throat> America has us believing that the people really has a say because we vote for who we vote for. Like, people voted for Biden. That's all right. People can vote for him. People voted for Trump. At the end of the day, who is going to like, okay, I'll give you an example. Biden, he made our military redo their their oath. One, me, I'm a patriotic person. I think that's disrespectful, not only to our troops, but to our country. Why? Because once you do your oath, your oath stays, you know, like you are stays with you forever. What's well, not unusual in, in very powerful regimes throughout history for the big honcho to ask for reallegiance, especially in times of uh, strife and, and struggle, you know, and, uh, and it appears that we're gliding gracefully into catastrophic, apocalyptic, nuclear, World War Three situations where we might all get drafted into fucking a suicide mission. And I think that is why this man believes that it's a good idea to ask the military for their real allegiance, just to clarify to them that they are uh, property of Uncle Sam and they are to operate in a manner that benefits Uncle Sam. Not you, not me, Uncle Sam. And, you know, that me, I... I I have plenty of respect for the military, you know, they're the warriors of the country, you know, they're the 
legal appointed warriors of the country, you know, and they gave up their rights as, as citizens to be soldiers, you know. So you got to commend them for that, you know. So I understand why you would feel a little bit irked. I feel irked about a lot of things Biden does, you know. There's this fucking TikTok meme, what, what, like video thing, uh, <laughs> streaming across all medias. And it's basically Joe Biden giving this motivational speech. Have you heard that one? Yeah. It's like the best way to do something that you love is to, um, to, um, um, the one where you fell asleep. Anyway, he just gives up. He gives like halfway through his like motivational speak, he gives up. It's like, uh, anyways, <laughs> let's change the subjects because I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Actually, I was talking to this guy, and who is this guy? Your brother from another mother. Well, from the same mother. Same mother. Same mother. You guys are brothers, and uh, he was telling me he, we were talking about Waterburger and and In and Out. First of all, what is your answer? Whataburger, hands okay. down. Because you're Texan, you're a cowboy. But I said both because I, I have never tasted what <laughs> in and out in my life, so I don't know. But <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm keeping my options open. I, I've I've I'm allowing the crowd to dictate my my response. You know, because everybody's like in and out is the shit. And and I was talking about I was making a metaphor between making burgers and creating a samurai sword. <laughs> Yeah, you what? Don't, okay, so I was t I was telling Leon that that I was like, okay, so I I kind of get what's going on with this in and out and Whataburger bullshit, you know? Because people who are diehards for the in and out culture, they understand that it's basically like they actually make it fresh. They take their time, they put love into each flip of the patty, you know? It's like every fucking cook in every in and out is a spongebob you know essentially you know so i was telling i was making the reference between that making burgers and creating a sword i'm like they are shoddy swordsmiths who don't fucking put the steel in the fire long enough don't pound the steel hard enough and just grind it off enough to make it look good but they know the steel is brittle whereas this master forger understands the process and it's a long one so that's why there's such long lines in in and out, right? Um, but halfway through my fucking like monologue or or whatever point I was trying to make, I forgot what we were talking about. So I was just like, so yeah, um, what do you think about? It? Okay, <laughs> so like <clears throat> I got a few questions for you. Sure. How how can you verify that in and out makes their patties fresh? Do you know someone that works no, there? No, I, I, I don't. I talk about things I don't verify. That's the only way I talk about them. I, I, I think there's enough educated opinions out there. There's a lot of evidence. There's a lot of algorithms to like, like logistics and data to point to whatever the fuck fact you're trying to find. Here, you're just trying to fucking hear how far off the wagon I fell off. That's it. That's it. You're not going to get facts here. You're not going to get the real truth. I'm probably going to fucking lie to you most of the time. So Tony Romo was the best running back. I mean, me personally, when I looked at Tony Romo running the back, I was like, fuck, nobody gets run the back like Tony Romo. And I can't believe it. Like They keep running him back after every halftime show, right? <laughs> So, as a matter of fact, um, Tony Romo, number nine, your wife's hot. First of all. You um, mean Jessica Simpson, right? Um, I don't know what his wife's name is, but she's bad to the bone. She's a dime. I tell and my you soul to the devil name? for a night with her. How dare you? You don't okay. know who Jessica Simpson is? You just but, know she's hot? How dare you? That's besides the point. The point is, he was a quarterback, number nine, Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Took us to the playoffs like three times. Oh wow, that that is something to be proud of. You went to the playoffs to lose. Um, we should have twenty fourteen. Des caught it for everybody saying that he did not catch it. He, he did catch it. We should have won that game. Um, went to the championship round. You know, but you know, the refs decide to bend his back and fuck us. You know what? What I think is the yin yang of the NFL. Is the whole fucking team, the whole team, all of it, 
including Jerry Jones. All of the fucking Cowboys is the yin and just one man, Tom Brady, is the yang. Okay, so I don't know what I'm trying to say here, but there are people that are undeniable. Your team is undeniably horrible, and and I'll tell you why. Because, like, look how you get. Look what they've done to you. They've distorted your sense of reality, you know? If you guys were good, the whole team would do something. Hold but up. You see one man who is genuinely, genuinely and objectively good. He's gr- one of the greats. I'll give you that. I'm probably being harsh comparing Tom and who's Brady. That man? To, to, comparing Tom Brady with fucking, you know, the Cowboys. I'm being unfair to Tom Brady, right? I, I, who would want to be <laughs> Tom Brady's like, why are you lumping me with these guys, you know? But I'm trying to say that the polar opposites are undeniable. He's undeniably great, and the team that you go for is undeniably um, the Cowboys. Okay, so being a Cowboys fan, it's had his ups, mostly downs. downs, you know. But fuck it, you said I'm, I'm a fan. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And just look at it every every year. You know, it, there's been countless years Cowboys made the playoffs. Woohoo! We made the playoffs. First round exit, second round exit. You know what? They hype up their fans. You know, we're like, they got us all. This is our year. This is our year. Motherfucker, shut the fuck up. It's not your year. I came to a conclusion in 2016. We drafted Dak Prescott. We drafted, we drafted Ezekiel Elliott. Well, Ezekiel Elliott, my fault. But Ezekiel Elliott had one of the best years. Tony, Tony Romo got injured in preseason. Dak Prescott stepped up. That year he was a top ten quarterback and he was a rookie, fourth round draft. Yeah, but what has he what has he done after the fact? Uh, he took it to a, a playoffs I, I think, countless I times. I think we saw something similar with Prescott, something similar in in the Denver uh, metropolitan area called the Broncos Stadium, where this one very genuine Christian man called Tim Tebow was uh, praying for the Lord before playing his games, and he was. He was loved by the community. I'm like, this hunk of a man, handsome, and he's Christian, and he praises the Lord on live TV. And and, and you know what we saw? We saw this fucking guy had a great first rookie season. And then the next fucking year, you know what he did? He shitted on his whole fucking team by sucking balls. They're just catfishing us. Dak Prescott is a good QB, and I'll say that right now. Um, They're all good QBs. I'm talking about great QBs, great teams. Though that's that's what that's, I'm talking that, about. That's what I was getting to. Dak Prescott is a good QB. He's above average. Can he get her done? I've been asking myself that question for many years, and I'm at the point where it's yes, he can get her done, but he needs a team around him. You look at Aaron Rodgers, great QB. He didn't get her. Green Bay Packers, right? Correct. Yeah, that is a great QB. He had... If he has one or two rings, that qualifies him to be... Okay, now, since we're on the Aaron Rodgers topic, who do you think is the GOAT? Aaron Rodgers? Tom Brady. Or Tom... I understand that Tom Brady has <laughs> rings. Tom Brady does it's have rings. It's not even a question, though, because, like, just don't even look at rings. Just look at the potential to, like, demolish somebody single-handedly. And that cannot like it's Aaron Rodgers with the Green Bay Pac, pa, pa, Green Bay Packers it, it green 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 gray fuckers <laughs> but you know what Tom Brady did he he proved that he is independent from the Patriots because you think it's Tom Brady and the Patriots but no he went to Tampa Bay and you know what he did he, he won a got- ring and that remember I mean, whenever there on. was that topic of what came first chicken or the egg that was Bill Belichick and Tom Brady as as goofy as it sounds you no, know no, it, it's, it's, I'm laughing because it, it makes sense Tom Brady he went to another team won the Super Bowl that same year <laughs> I cannot personally name another player that's been that impactful for a team. Yeah, you could say Tom Brady, he had weapons on Tampa Bay. He still has the weapons. 
realistically speaking, I give Tom Brady five more years tops. I think he should retire right now. And it'll be completely fine. I won't say shit. I'm like, dude, <clears throat> thank God you're giving them a chance to <laughs> fucking... See? See? And, and what? His wife divorced Tom Brady. Yeah, Who the fuck why? would divorce Tom Brady? See, but Giselle, she's bad to bone. I sell my, my soul to the devil, you know, for not with her. So, it's, so it's, but, but that's okay, besides okay, the point. Okay, so this is what He's, I think happened with Lil Nas. Lil Nas sold his soul just to twerk on the devil. You're telling me you would sell your soul to twerk on Giselle? No, that is not what I stated. I, I'm I'm just saying she is that bad. I would go through great lengths to be with her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And but if you look at Tom Brady, he chose football over his own family. That's how many people. That's see what it. all great men do. They choose fucking greatness over their families. You know that's why they're shitty, shitty parents, shitty husbands. You know because they're they're being conquerors. You think Alexander the Great was a fucking great husband and a father? You think he gave a fuck about his children? They were disposable for him. As fucked up as that sounds, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I mean, agree I mean, with the statement. I mean, I, I was, because, um, you know, they have this TikTok feature for everything now. And you know what's funny? One platform starts the trend and then everyone else follows, like with the stories. We saw that with fucking Snapchat. Everybody loves Snapchat because you could fucking <laughs> continuously. Um, <laughs> water break <laughs> you can continuously talk nonsense you can continuously post nonsense oh look at my food because you're not going to post that on your actual page because nobody gives a fuck about your food you know because you're going to be like how many likes did I get on my steak oh nobody gives a fuck about my <clears throat> steak but if you put it on your story it's like this is just part of my day I'm letting you in on on my life, you know, and then Instagram followed through, Facebook followed through, and everyone else followed through. And now they're doing that with the shorts, with the reels, the little clips, right. the 10 second clips, you know. Right. And and now my question to you is, since we're on the social media topic, do you think a person lives a social media life and their regular life? Like, is, do you think they're both I would the hope same? So or you, two you're talking separate about- ones. Man, if somebody cannot turn off the switch after the camera lights are off, you're fucking sick in the head, man. You know what I mean? Like, you have to understand that, like, at some point, you are fucking playing a part, you know? You're going to be a little bit scandalous, more scandalous than you normally would. You're going to be a little bit more um, uh, energetic than you normally would. And, and everybody's going to be like, man, what the fuck? You're like, this fucking fake-ass motherfucker he doesn't fucking give me hugs and kisses off the camera, but he does it on, on the podcast to get likes and views. Yeah. Cause I want likes and views. You know what I mean? Um, right. it, and it's to the degree that you want all of that. And to the degree that you believe everything that you portray, you know? So I would hope people, uh, who are, you know, making videos and shit can like the people that like make videos for children, you know? Um, you know, they're, they're playing hide and go seek, they're playing, uh, uh, cosplay, like pretend. And, and I'm thinking you're a fucking adult. Can you imagine you're one of those people and then you come to the barbecue and you're like fucking famous, you know, you're rich. You, you roll up in your Rolls Royce, Lamborghini, you're fucking, you you have 2 million followers on YouTube, but all your followers are fucking kids, dude. All your fucking followers are, are, are fucking children and they're just watching you being a goofy ass motherfucker. Man, I'd rather have only three followers than to have 200 million followers watching me be a goofy-ass motherfucker. You know? But that's me, you know? that That's that's where I have my fucking... My ceiling, you know? I'm not going to cater to children. I'm going to fucking do whatever the fuck I want. And that means children cannot watch that, you know? Because you don't, you don't want your kids watching that. Or listening to me. Yeah, I have to agree. I, I always right. give that parental advice like, at some point. You know, I'm like, yeah, children, if you're watching this, fucking turn this shit off. And if your parents are listening to this, tell them to turn this shit off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know how some people, well, not people, but influencers, they go for to great extents 
to get the views. Look at Logan Paul. He had posted a vlog <clears throat> about the suicide forest. And after that, his views decreased. And But he ironically made that video for views. And he... The saddest part is that was... It was good. It was. I'm not saying well, it, was it was a good was, video, but he was, was a. Uh, I meant like he was a good uh, influencer. L listen, you're, you're, at that time, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Like he is. Um, like look at him now. Like he bounced back. Great. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. You but know? he because, had a good solid platform to do so. Think no, about but, it. but like you have to understand what happened there. Like he got canceled. He really did get canceled. Like the fucking Jordan Petersons, the Andrew Tates, etc. The Ben Shapiro's, all the people, and it's funny because people that get canceled are usually saying something incendiary, something uh, polarizing, but most likely they're also saying something with a hint of truth. And anything with a hint of truth is gonna get vilified, you know. Logan Paul has not said one single ounce of truth. He's just fucking. He's out for his own fucking agenda, you know, which is just entertainment, you know. And I think that in and of itself is great. People need to be entertained, you know? That's why there's programs. There's, there's always been cartoons. There's always been shit to distract you. We need Logan Paul. We need Logan Paul. But he got canceled, and he bounced back. Okay. But now he's talking shit about Andrew Tate because, like, he thinks, oh, yeah, like, his message is, is misogynistic and, and fucking, you know, dangerous, when in reality, it's like, dude, you're fucking laughing at a dead person who killed himself. Like, you don't know what his life was. You don't know why he, it drove him. And who knows? Because I, I know he went to J this specific Japan forest where a lot of suicides happen, you know? Some people think the forest is haunted, you know? And he might have been un put under a spell, or he might have had a shitty life where he had no way out, the bills were piling up, and you kill yourself, and the next thing you know, your spirit is trapped, encapsulated in this forest, and you see this blonde-ass fucking gorilla fucking recording himself fucking in your corpse, you know? And he's laughing. He's like, look at this motherfucker, you know? I don't think he left. I hope he didn't. I didn't watch the video, but that's, that's basically what's going on, you know? <laughs> well, that's a lot to take in. I, just like, <laughs> just to understand your perspective and process it, it's it's a lot to take in because let me simplify it in, in some um, way like I, I do understand where you're coming from i hope so and and then but remember how you had mentioned andrew tate the reason why i think he's against andrew tate is because andrew tate called out jake paul jake paul's a youtuber i don't think he's a boxer yeah he's undefeated but he always picks fights he can win. Okay. This is what I think about Jake Paul the boxer. The Jake Paul the boxer is a great boxer. And he can knock you the fuck out. Period. Yeah, he's been training longer than... Well, I don't even train, but he's been training. I he's, mean... But if... I'll take you into perspective. You work out. If you were to, to get into... If you were to get into boxing... And by Jake Paul, if you had all the experience and training that he has, I'd have my money on you. Yeah, but, um, you know, what I realized about him is that he's not really clowning. You know, he really does possess power, you know, and I, I, I can be perfect. Like me against him, this is what would happen. I need to be perfect 100% of the time and he needs to be perfect 1% of the time, meaning he only has to land on what punch. You know, um, and man, that would, I mean, I saw how he knocked out Tyron Woolley. He knocked him out cold and Tyron Woolley is no fucking scrub, man. He's a fucking former world champion in the UFC. So like if he could do that to him, I don't know what he can do to me. Okay. But now if, if we're, we're changing the scales a little bit and it's Andrew Tate against Jake Paul. Now that, that to me is way more interesting because Andrew Tate's a big guy also. And he is a world champion kickboxer. Now, he holds belts in a discipline. Jake Paul doesn't, you know. Um, Jake Paul barely started training. Andrew Tate has been fighting his whole life. So, 
my money would be on Andrew Tate, but Jake Paul is he, – he has a puncher's chance. I, I, I think that's what would happen. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I think Jake Paul's a good fighter. But as, mu- as much as he runs his mouth, I don't think he's a great fighter. Like, he toots his own horn. He thinks he can beat whoever he fights. Look at Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia pulled up to Jay Paul's house. He said, sign this contract so we can fight. Jake Paul decided to say, get off my property. That's embarrassing. As a quote-unquote fighter, I'd be like, okay, let's get her done. You know, me personally, I would have been like, you pull up to my house, let's get her done. I, I, I don't I don't need the ring to fuck you up. Well, that's I'll different. take you right here, right now. That's completely different. But I think Ryan Garcia is trying to make money, you know, and, and he's not trying to scrap in, in Logan Paul's or Jake Paul's fucking props. But, you know... Um, I don't think a real fight between them would be viable because an, any athletic commission would be like, what the fuck are you suggesting? You know, and but okay, take that back. If it's an exhibition, we could do something like Floyd and Logan, where we could have somebody three times your size fight somebody with three times the experience yeah. or a hundred times the experience. Exactly. So like, I wouldn't want to get punched by you, you know? Oh, shit. He's busting out the... No. Okay, so we're back from that short um, recess, you know. It was a twinkle break, but we have time to plug in our sponsors and and commercials and all that fun stuff that regular TV provides as well. I'm going to be like regular TV on YouTube. That's what I decided just now as I was peeing. I'm like, you know, that's that's also what's missing on the internet. Just regular TV where there's... uh, inconvenient interruptions for your favorite program you know about shit that you don't fucking even care about like dialysis and and fucking those diabetes socks that they're you know what i mean like yeah i know like what that, you mean yeah i'm gonna have all of that in this shit nice so you're gonna have untrue unfiltered uncensored information um and you're also gonna have commercials and i think i'm gonna succeed with that model yeah just get her done i like that yeah yeah so you, you gotta go retro sometimes so not bad not bad so you're talking about dogs michael vick mm-hmm. you're talking about el amores perros love is and and that's the actual translation love is a bitch um so basically, there's this fucking Cujo-looking dog. I don't remember the fucking name, but th- this guy's like the fucking Mike Tyson of dogs. He'll fuck any dog up. For reals. You tell him, boom, like, fuck it. And they tried at the beginning of the movie, one of the fucking... Well, they're all bad in their own way, you know? But one of the the guys that you are probably not going to like tried to kill this dog with their own dog. Hey, go, go fuck him up. Well, little did they know that they were fucking with the wrong dog and the dog fucked up that dog, killed them. You know what these motherfuckers did? They got the fucking dead dog and drove to that motherfucker's house, the owner of the dog, and they're like, look. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's your dead dog. <laughs> What's going on here? You know, like, your dog killed my dog. And it's like, oh, word. Well, I heard that you fucking had your dog, you, you, you had him sick my dog. Like, like you, you had him attack my dog. So, like, like yeah, well, this dog is fucking worth 20K. You're going to have to pay up in three days, yada, yada, yada. Or I don't know how what, what's going to happen, you know, kind of, like, threatening you. And it's like, but why, though? Like, you're the one that fucking had your, your dog attack my dog. I'm not going to pay you shit. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know? You fucking retarded, <laughs> you know? And it just escalates from there. You know, this guy ends up thinking, hey, I have an undefeated world champion dog that can fucking kill any other dog. 
I'm going to fucking capitalize on this. And this motherfucker is making bank fighting this dog. Bank, I'm telling you, like thousands of fucking pesos. <laughs> and, and okay, here's the little drama that's added into all of this, you know. I'm not going to get too much in detail, but this guy's love interest is his brother's girl. Word? Word, dude. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, he starts giving her the money that he earns. He's like, here's 50,000 pesos. And she's like, nigga, where the fuck did you get this money from? Like, we got to take care of Because she's pregnant with his brother's baby. You know, it's just like, we have to take care of the baby. And she's like, but it's not your baby. Like, what the fuck? Is, like, you're good, bro. You don't have to worry about me like that. That's weird. And it's like, well, you know what's not weird? Me loving you. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, it gets like that. So um, I, that's a recommend for sure. That's a banger. Sounds like a good movie, you know, like. Sounds interesting. I'll keep it in mind. Okay. You watch a lot of movies. What do you recommend? That's a very good question. A new truck is coming out. Oh shit! No shit. Oh yeah, I saw that. Today it came out. On what? Should we go watch it right now, bro? Let's get her done. Let's go watch Halloween ends. I'm and, kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I'm a scary cat, bro. Like no, I know no. I play up this little sinister hey. kid. That that uh, it has to lead us to the darkness. The There's a cameo right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't worry, I'll hold your hand with it. No, no, the grass way. <laughs> uh, I belong to Chickaleen. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I belong to Chickaleen. He already claimed me oh, yeah, a long time ago, bro. Long time ago. We're don't tell me y'all have been working out broke, without me. Broke back, break masters. Remember. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? And it's like, oh, is, is that wrong? It's like, no, I just, who told you to stop? <laughs> wait, the movie came down. You want me to finish your breaks or not? <laughs> Chingale. Wait, wait, like off topic, but no the movie theaters or, or, or can we topic. stream it? The Chucky movie. What are you saying? That we're going to Ch- fucking illegally stream a brand new fucking premiering movie? Of course not. You think I, I would not com- know any, th- any, any yeah, websites. You think yeah. we're thieves? Of course not. <laughs> Why are you blowing my cover like that? <laughs> I'm not even going to fucking but if vindicate that. The comment. FBI, any cops, any, you know, any of that sort is watching. No, I've never streamed anything illegal. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I don't know why you would guys even suggesting such a thing. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. They spent millions of dollars, man. Millions to bring you this fucking shit. And you fucking a-holes decide to fucking go online instead of going and driving your ass to that dark room with a fucking bowl full of fucking popcorn and that fucking large ass fucking coke that for some reason it's usually very large but in the movies it's small it's like it's like the movie still hasn't started i'm already needing a refill (laughs) (laughs) see and that's why you get the deluxe package man the one with the free refill of the popcorn tell me about this deluxe package like it's 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 just a free you know uh uh-huh of the big ass popcorn yeah and then uh, free get, yeah free, free refill bro for for life no nah, no nah, no manches great <laughs> nah, manches. you get one per purchase okay i can't guarantee the drink because i haven't been to the movies and it's, it's been a minute it's been like a solid month i like going to the movies i think the last time i went to the movies was to watch the venom movie was it good Oh, uh, I I I like all that anti-hero shit. Deadpool, sign me up. The ne- the new Deadpool with fucking Wolverine is coming out. Oh, uh, is it coming out too? <laughs> <laughs> Wakanda Forever. 
Wolverine forever. That guy doesn't die, supposedly. Did he die in Logan? What the fuck is he doing alive? I want him dead. He deserves to rest. Logan deserves to have some fucking peace. And Deadpool is like, hey, you up? <laughs> I got a movie coming up. You can do a little cameo. Maybe a big one. I don't know. I have steroids. You can look good on camera still. I mean... <laughs> Man, Hugh Jackman should be the only fucking Wolverine. We should just discontinue Wolverines from now on. Because, and he also Iron Man. I'll give him Iron Man too. Because we could have a million Batmans and we already like... The new Batman, it wasn't shit. I, Robert I went, Pattinson? I, I went to the movie theaters. I shit you not. I'm not a pregame. Cat I ain't gonna lie. Catwoman was... And even with the little pregame... I, wine. No, 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 but fuck all that mean, bullshit. No, no, no. Fuck all that bullshit. No, I'm talking about the new Batman. Yeah. So you're talking about Jessica Simpson as if she's the most beautiful woman in the world, and you don't know her name, but I'm talking about Catwoman, and you're saying, no, 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 fuck all that bullshit? No, no, she, she bats his bone. I'd that, bone her. Don't get me wrong, but okay. I'm just saying, I fell asleep <laughs> during the new Batman movie. Literally, I was at the theaters mm. sleeping, bro. I, I, I was here. It's just because... I guess it was just too slow for me. I agree. I think that movie was kind of like... They made Bruce Wayne emo-ish. Like, Robert Pattinson could have gotten a haircut, could have taken steroids, could have done the whole fucking shebang. But no, he, he looked like he came straight across Twilight. Like, he got off set of Twilight. And he's like, all right, guys, thank you for... Uh, such a wonderful eight years uh, of my life. I I'm definitely going to retire this character as a vampire. And I'm going to be a, a Batman now. And all he did is slap on some makeup. Some eyeliner. You mean also we're talking about that there's a She-Hulk? She She-Hulk. On Disney Plus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she twerks. She twerks. She twerks on, on Disney Plus. Yeah. I mean, if she that's Hulk, your mojo, then no, go no, ahead no, and no. watch wow. it. Look. This is the only reason I would subscribe to Disney Plus. I was about to say OnlyFans. You push me off because I'm watching. No, 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 no. Yeah, that was a close one. I don't know how I confused Disney Plus and then fucking OnlyFans, man. Fucking She Hulk. But Disney Plus is actually pretty good if you're into like superhero. The movies. Mandalorian, man. The Mandalorian is such an enticing storyline where you look at this motherfucker fucking forged in two head to toe and 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 uh best car armor and he is carrying around a baby yoda how the fuck do you not like that show i mean the the show starts episode one season one starts with a beheading now that's a show even if it's on disney plus that's a show that's worth watching have you seen the mandalorian you know what <gasps> i have not <gasps> But then again, you're gonna give me an asthma attack. But hold up, hold up. I How don't watch you? shows when they're popular. How dare you? Because, okay, watch it's popping Game, right now. Watch Game of Thrones. I, I've watched watch Sam Thrones. Great, great show. Have you watched uh, House, of the Fi uh, House of the Dragon? I sure haven't. What the fuck? Dude? Okay, I'm gonna put this into perspective. What's wrong with I you? haven't even yeah, watched the Jeffrey Dahmer show. Cowboy shit into your fucking brain, and you're not leaving any space for some art. That's what's going on here. You know what's arts? Maddie. You know what's arts? Ip Man. Now that is a work of Ip art. Ip Man? Ip Man. The movie? Oh, Bruce movies. Lee's master? Yep. Yeah. Now, now that's something I can watch and rewatch and rewatch. Definitely a top 10 movie in is my Is Wing books. Chun le legit though? Not in the movie. Is Wing Chun legit? I know somebody, the, the guy who's done most of my tattoos, uh, well, the only guy who's done more than one tattoo on me, uh, including myself. Um, that guy, he 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 has he knows Wing Chun, and he's a scary motherfucker, dude. Like, he was showing me some shit, and it's, like, all from, like, from here, dude. You're just like, pa 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 pa. You're like, how does this even make sense? Yeah, I, th I think he's a real deal. You think you you think well it been for sure is and then Bruce Lee, I think we should, and we don't, but we should commend him for creating the mixed martials. Right. Arts. See now, 
Do you believe in the student becomes master? Look at Bruce Lee. Look at Ant Man. Do you think Bruce Lee would be would beat Ant Man in a fight? Yeah. Easy. Uh, why do you say easy? I personally do not think he wouldn't. It would. It wouldn't even be a competition, man. As much as I love Bruce Lee, I would have to disagree with that statement. Okay, I was just being a fucking shit talker, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, but I'll give you a reason why I do genuinely believe uh, Bruce Lee would win, and it's because Bruce Lee is most likely more willing to use more unorthodox uh, techniques. And so he was a proponent of wrestling. You know, if somebody can wrestle and you cannot wrestle, and you could do all this other shit, flying knees, flying whatever, uh, spinning attacks, uh, Wing Chun, which is it, man's specialty if you could do all that it doesn't matter if you're on the ground getting fucking mauled you know so i think bruce lee did do some kind of wrestling training you know he trained a lot of different disciplines it man is only renounced as a wing chun master and the ufc has been clearly identifying the fact that you need to be a well-rounded individual in all the martials. Otherwise, uh, the guy who knows how to wrestle is going to beat you if you don't know how to wrestle. Even if you're a fucking far superior striker. That's where my reasoning is coming. And I agree to some extent. I think a well-rounded fighter could be a master in one. I think it definitely has his advantages. For instance, let's say you know jiu-jitsu, you know kickboxing, you know boxing, you know wrestling. You're average at all of all of those. Let's say I was a pro boxer. In a street fight, I think you'd have the upper hand since you have an understanding of how Everything revolves, right? Yeah, but like, you but, have but, more but. experience in some sort. But if I'm a master boxer, I like boxing for street fighting. Actually, I think I will rock you ninety percent of the time. Yeah, and and then of course, let's say our arm lengths are the same, our height is the same. Either you're my height, I'm your height. Our weight is similar. Let's say you weigh, I don't know. No, I'm I'm a lightweight. Okay. I'm a featherweight. I'm a light, yeah, flyweight. <laughs> All right. Let's say you I'm weigh very small. Let's say you weigh 140 and I weigh 150. We'd have all those adv- uh, all of those similar advantages to ourselves. Mm-hmm. I still think if I was a pro boxer, I could rock you. Or yeah, but like you know look- what's funny? You're not. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean. So what would happen in a real fight between you and me, since? You're putting superpowers on on yourself. Remove them. <clears throat> Take off the mask. Between me and you. Yeah, yeah. I've had had my favorites of. I know many mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. You know many too. I do have the height advantage. I have the reach. I have the weight on you. But it was proven that one Saturday that it don't matter how tall you are, how heavy you are. If you've been working out and you're in better shape and you know more mixed martial arts, you would beat me in a fight 90% of the time. Between me and you, you would win 90% of the time. And I'll give you that. My respects to you, my props. And I'll give you the 10%. But I do believe anything can happen in a fight. Yeah, anything. that's what you have, 10%. This motherfucker... <laughs> You know what? I'm literally <laughs> taking that into consideration. I'm like, yeah, that's basically 8%, like the unknown. I could be fucking drunk, trip on a wire, and then fall on your fist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's 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 the other 2%. <laughs> I, I can say that I've been in my fair share of fights. Mm-hmm. I've, I've rocked most people who I've fought. I've also gotten my, the shit beat out of me. You know, it's, it's been in situations where it's been a, you know, it's been like a two on six. 
my boy and I. He got her done. Did we fight dirty? Yeah, we kicked two or three in the balls. Chickalene when he fought that black guy? You guys' brother is a firecracker. That guy is down to fight anyone, anywhere, at any time, and I'm I'm cool with that. Um, dude, I fucking roll up in, in, in my boss's truck, and it's a diesel, so it's making noise, and, and it right away gets uh, uh, Chickalene so fucking attention. He's just... Yeah. And and he does the the whole pulling up your shorts to make sure like they're up enough so if you need a swing or like scrap, they were they're not gonna fall off, you know. So he's like getting himself in the mood, right? And I'm like, hi, how are you? Hi, what's up? What's up, man? It's me. Yeah, uh, and he's uh, approaching and I see fire in his eyes. I'm like, hey. I'm like, I'm like, bro, it's me. <laughs> I'm like, dog. Well, I'm like, to me. <laughs> I'm like. Hello. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, dog, I didn't recognize you, dog. Oh, shit, man, I was about to fuck you up. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> is that really how you greet people? <laughs> you know, I, I'd, I'd have to agree with your statement. Yeah, he is a firecracker. Not is, but was a firecracker. He has more self-control and more self-discipline now. He has, don't get me wrong, he'll still fight any, anybody, anytime, anywhere, as long as there's a good reason for it. Old him would have fought anybody, anytime, anywhere for some stupid little predicament. You look at him wrong, y'all throwing hands whether you like it or not, whether you want the smoke or not. You know what? 90% of those fights, I'd have my brother, nah, fuck all that bullshit. What, what, about, you, what, about, what about you against him? <laughs> He has been working out. He has. Why don't you work out? What would happen if you worked out? If I'd work out, dude. I, I think in one month, you would surprise yourself. I, I think you, you forget who you are. And, and, and this whole, um, <clears throat> don't get me wrong. I am a victim of, you know, fucking off. You know, I, I, I'm like, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to finish my reports. And I might even edit the podcast and I'm going to upload it. And and next thing you know, guess what? I'm fucking smoking pot and drinking and fucking forgetting about everything because I'm listening to some badass music. And then I'm like, oh, well, this is why my life sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I was, if I hit the gym, you know, like my plan I'm, is I'm bulking up right now. We'll get him. Dude, you, you <laughs> bulked up enough. Okay. This is, this is, this is a good mark. Um, what is that marble 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 sta- statues oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a well, good slab of marble to sculpt yourself <laughs> as a fucking god a fucking greek god you and know? you know what I, with a cowboy hat you oh, know? When, <laughs> whenever i start working out i'm beyond natural literally when i say on natural I'm going to get on all the boosters, fucking I, COVID boosters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to take that pre-workout bullshit. Do I think it helps me? It will help me? No. I, Even I, when I was in my best shape, that know, pre-workout I, no, bullshit no, didn't help me. It depends on what you get because there are definitely I've some had it all. Uh, shibby shabby workout pr- uh, products that don't have the right ingredients. But a good pre-workout argument is going to... Of course, it's going to make your butt itchy and shit. Uh, and, and your face also. So, like, you're scratching everything. But, man, if, if you're having an off day, it doesn't hurt to fucking slap a uh, double scoop and just fucking hit the gym hard, you know? See, you got the wrong guy. I don't have a heart attack if that happens. And then we went to the gym after, like, six months, tried to do days. Bro, we're lifting, like, a plate and a half, two plates. And then the chicks next to us were lifting, like... Two and a half plates, and then I was like, "Yeah, we need to start doing." Yeah, <laughs> you know it's because you, you you think, man, I think I'm at the like the peak of my of my powers. You know, like I haven't gym in a month, but I know this is like my peak. My weight. You know, yeah, I'm, you this know. is me. This is who I am. And then you see chicks who are where like quote unquote anorexic, and next thing you know, the power lifting fucking, and they're fucking this, and they're, they look like She Hulk, and you're like, <laughs> if they can do it, why can't I? Bro, I'm not gonna cap after the first time, like the second time we went back to the gym and I hit that three plates, or I tried to hit the three plates, but the second rep I started fucking. Moving yeah, moving you start moving. fucking like dozing off, like the the room starts spinning because you're using so much effort that you're like, oh my god, like I wasn't supposed to do that. I was, I almost like bursted a blood vessel in my brain or something. Oh my, are you still in the socket? <laughs>
<laughs> but um i want to circle back to like this double standard situation because it is a conversation to be had you know a lot of people are um you know very concerned with what's right for them and then when when you try to let them know what's right for you all of a sudden that's wrong right right yeah and i mean i've I've actually been victim of a double standard. Well, well, walk me through this victimhood you've been through. Okay, so I had a cop. He pulled me over. It was not too long ago. I just moved back. And but you look like a white guy. Yeah, you're right. I do look like a white guy. And you talk like a white guy. And and I understand that, but as soon as I... You know how they ask you for license and registration, please. As soon as I pulled down my license, he read my license. He hit me with the, I'm going 80 on a 35. So from my house, going down the Swan Street is, I had 50 feet, no more than 50 feet. Could have been less, but I know it could have, it could not have been more. This cop, <clears throat> he hits me with the, you're going 80 on a 55 as soon as he reads my plates. I asked him, why'd you pull me over? He's like, because you were speeding. Okay. He didn't tell me the speed I was going at that very instance. He told me, can I see your license and registration, please? So yes, sir. I just bought my uh, current truck because I had wrecked my, well, I didn't wreck it. I got in an accident. It was the other person's fault with my, with my taco. And well... My Tacoma, but I called it my taco or my paloma. Mm -hmm. That's besides the point. So whenever there was like 50 feet, if I was going 80, there's no way. Because at that point, I had, at that time, I had shitty brakes. So I'd gotten muddy. But I made a complete stop, let a car pass by, turned left. If I was going 80 miles per hour, I would not have made that complete stop. And so whenever I showed him my license, tra tracing back to my license and registration, I showed him my license, showed him my <laughs> insurance. And he he was like, you were going 80 on 35. I was like, sir, there's no one there. You were going 80 on, on 35. And I asked him, why are you being nasty? You know, like, you, you know damn well if I was going 80 on the 35, I wouldn't have made a complete stop, but you still, I'll give it to you. Yeah, I was, I was speeding. I was going, I was going probably 40, okay, 42 okay, okay. on hold that. Hold on, hold on. And this is all alleged. Let's, let's just, for legal purposes, this is just allegedly what, what the cops saw and what you saw allegedly, you know, I, I like that word. I like that word a lot because it's what such, it, it, it's a blanket statement, but it's such a, one of those fuzzy, warm blankets that cover you nicely. And, and, and Yeah, okay, so allegedly I was speeding up to my knowledge. Okay, and I'm going to ask you some um, hypothetical questions. So let's say you were speeding. How fast do you think you were speeding? 42, 43, on 35. So you were just 12 miles above, uh, uh, hypothetically speaking. And he and he went overboard and he put tacked on what like fucking 40. fifty more miles, right? And 40 that should have been uh, so it's fifty miles and that should have been total. a felony arrest. Um he should put my ass in cuffs if I if I was actually but, going but that I, speed. I, I, I'm I'm listening to you, but I wonder, what are you what are you saying that he deduced that you were of Latino descent and he decided to fuck you by saying, yeah, you were going 80 miles instead of allegedly 40. Instead of getting that one ticket, he gave me three. As soon as he read my license, he gave me for no registration. It, I had just bought the truck, right? There's no fucking way I was going to be able to get my registration. As soon as I pop the truck. Okay, but I do have to say, you can get your registration, show it in court, and that's dismissed. Okay, so yeah. So let's say that that in and of itself is just protocol, not racism. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then I also 
He got another ticket for having the wrong plates. He ran what, it through the system. What do you mean the wrong plates? That the plates that I had for my truck. Wait, paper wait, wait, plates. hold on, hold on, hold on. If you have plates, why don't you have a registration? No, no, no. There were paper plates at the time that okay. I got the ticket. And then now I got my current plates. Okay, got. now, but at the time you, you had, I had paper, paper plates. plates. Okay. Those paper plates matched the, the plates that I got in my truck. Mm -hmm. According to that officer, the plates didn't match my truck. Either, and he said, and I quote, it's either stolen and wherever you bought it. It's stolen or you could have stole it. I was like, no, here are my documents because I still had the papers in the truck where I bought the truck from Sunday Motors. Shows the date, shows my down payment that I made for it, shows enough proof stating that I didn't steal the truck. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I would never steal a vehicle. That's 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 a felony right there. I've never yeah. done it, never thought of it. No, but you don't know, get me wrong, in GTA, I'd be in GTA five, I'd be stealing GTA. cars left and <laughs> left and right, you know. How about the fucking whip? That's a nice whip. But in IRL, I would never. Yeah, well, real life, is that what you're saying? Yeah, in real life. In real life, a lot of things that are cool are not cool. And that's fine, you know. I don't want people breaking into my house and stealing my shit, you know. I don't want people thinking that it's okay to be mean to me. But there are those quite impressionable individuals who who like to play pretend. And and some people are serious. Those, those are even scarier, you know. But, you know, I think in your situation... Um, you're reading too much in between the lines, you know? And, and uh, in some sense, I, I can agree. I, I don't think the cop was necessarily a bad cop for doing his job. And for the record, just to repeat, you, uh, you are for cops, right? Yeah, yeah. I support yeah. the cops. I have a brother who's a cop. He's a great cop. I don't think he's a great person. He has good morals. Mm -hmm. um, if me, myself... If the mechanic doesn't go my way, being a mechanic, I'd, I'd be a Texas Ranger, you know, or I'd be a cop. And the reason I say that is because I don't want to make some change if I could go into that field. But um, I don't necessarily think the cop was a bad cop. I, I do want to say that for the record. Have I known somebody with a different scenario that would explain a double standard way better than mine yeah i have a buddy who's white caucasian you know he had some european blood into him and you know like he looked white I think his you, you, name but, was white his last name was white but hold on hold on you're talking about double standards but involving racial situations yeah I, I had a why, why are you correlating both of them together because i had a, a white friend who got pulled over he got off with a warning, mm -hmm. and he was on shit. 12 of the speed limit. I had a black buddy. Got pulled over. He was asked to step out of his car. He was not held under arrest. But just the fact that those two scenarios, I'm like, dude, that's fucked. Why did you pull him out of the car? My black buddy, he did not have... Any weapons on him? No narcotics? There was no reason to pull him out the car. I, I think uh, a police officer doesn't need a reason. Just uh, it, it just so happens that we give him the reason. Like in your case, I think you were you were being a you were being antagonist, <laughs> and that the with any law enforcement situation, I have found that. It's, a, it's like beating a dead horse, you know, like you're not going to win ever. And I've been in an alleged situation, hypothetical situation, fairy tale, really, where I decided to buy drugs. And I have been... Allegedly, of course. Uh, yeah, of course. And I had been sober, allegedly, for a long time. So I needed drugs, you know. I was tweaking out. So... I connected, I got my, my, my shit, 
in this fairy tale story that I'm guys telling you. I'm making this whole thing up, really, but um, I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to get home. Uh, and and there's a moral to this story, okay? So that's why I'm telling it, not because I'm fessing up to a crime or anything like that. I I couldn't wait, so I parked. I parked right away, like a few blocks away from where I got the stuff. And I was about to indulge when I realized that there were some lights shining in my rear view mirror. And I turned around and it's the fucking cops. <laughs> so I'm like, I, I immediately knew that like my reaction, my, well, my, my, the process of parking and then pulling out all of my paraphernalia and narcotics to indulge it looked like hey to the cops i pu- i turned on the lights and this guy's pulling over like a good citizen but i didn't know i was getting pulled over so i was <laughs> i was like what the fuck Who? and, and I, I, allegedly and i didn't i didn't know what the fuck was going on so i just immediately shoved everything in my shoe and so i had i had stuff in my shoe you know and they they start telling me the whole nonsense so cold question do you know why i stopped you why do they always open with that i don't know why i feel like it's because if you keep it a book with them oh because i was speeding or because i got mm-hmm. a bag on me that makes sense you as a person would think oh it might go better for me since i was honest you know, well, I had no idea what I was getting pulled over. We have two minutes, brother. So this story basically ends in a happy ending. Um, that walk to the patrol area because they told they they told me <clears throat> why did I arrest? Why did I arrest you? Why did I pull you over? I was like, I don't fucking know, dog. But this is bullshit. And they told me your lights are off. I'm like, no, they're not. And then I turned them on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, you know what? I'm so sorry. I'm like, fuck your sorry. Get the fuck out of the car. We're going to search you. And I was like, hey, man, like, I get it. Like, just give me my ticket. I'm actually, on, like, in a hurry, you know. I need to do drugs. <laughs> and they're like, nah, ni, ni verga. Fucking get off the fucking car and we're going to search you. And they and let me tell you, I had stuff in my shoe and I had to pretend or walk as if nothing was in my shoe. It was the longest walk of my life. And they searched me everywhere, dude, everywhere except in my shoe. And then they told me, they told me, yes, even anal cavity, everything except my shoe. And and then they were like, can we search your car? I'm like, motherfucker, like why you already fucking pulled me over i already said yes give me my ticket you already searched me i'm in a hurry why do you want to search my car They're like hey you have nothing to hide i'm like no dude i don't give you permission all right we'll just get a warrant and we'll call the canine unit and then the the light bulb went Bang. yeah i'm like if the canines come in they might not smell anything in my car because there's nothing in my car but they're gonna smell shit in my shoe so i'm like yeah go for it check my car Towards the end, they were like, hey, man, if you didn't have anything, why were you were so reluctant? I'm like, because I'm in a hurry, dog, and yada, yada, yada. And so randomly. that's how. This is how I know some cops are just assholes. One of them was like, hey, man, because it was two. He was like, hey, man, just to let you know, if you would have gone, like, frisky with us, we would have fucked you up. And I was like, okay, who was talking about fighting, dude? I'm like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, there's some asshole cops. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've had had my fair share with good cops, you know, like allegedly speaking. And I uh, that one night it was my, my father passed away on May 10th. And whenever I went to his funeral, I went, you know, like I I went back to Austin and I was I was driving in my standard F-150 at the time and. I could have had like nine felonies on me. I was going felony speeds. You know, I was I had like thirty cans in my truck, in the bed of my truck. Allegedly, guys. Allegedly, of course. Allegedly. And I think we should end this podcast because I haven't had an ending in a podcast in a while. Everything gets cut off towards the end. So the the moral of the story is cop could have 
fucked up my whole life, allegedly. But he drove my ass home. Matty Ice, guys, we'll have him again soon. For sure. Thank y'all. Thank you.